disclaimer before we get into this video, just note that everything in this video is based on the Gamescom and E3 build, it's like a little demo version, it's not based on the final version, there's no performance parts, there's no full tuning, so remember, this is just based on the early build of the game. Hey there guys, Black Panther here, and welcome back to another Need for Speed 2015 video once again. Now today, I'm going to be talking about the handling slider and basically the tuning overall in Need for Speed, giving my opinion because as some of you know I'm more on the side of I want the black box era style handling in Need for Speed and some people prefer the drift handling this is what Ghost have come up with to basically give you the best of both worlds. Now the first Need for Speed video I released was actually a grip build of the BRZ I went almost full grip that we were able to because you can improve it even more once you got the performance upgrades on the car that sort of thing but this thing was really, really cool to drive because I've been used to sliding around, you know, on the last Need for Speeds recently. And personally, I actually prefer to grip a little bit more. But to me, this was just insane amounts of grip I never even expected. It did not slide at all unless you really, really forced it and got lucky with the handbrake. And that is absolutely awesome. I can see myself using this mostly for, say, time trials. And a thing to remember is that you can have up to five cars in your garage in Need for Speed. So each car already handles differently as we covered in a previous video. Then you've got to slap on the performance upgrades. Then you've got to slap on the tuning. So as you can imagine, each car is going to handle very, very differently. So there's no really set tune that is perfect for every single car. It's more of a fact that you need to find the right balance yourself. And I really, really like that. It's not really been a thing in Need for Speed before, but it's a very welcomed addition to the game because it adds more depth to the game. But as for the grip, as I said, it is very, very grippy. It's very difficult to get this thing to slide at all. You're going to have a little bit of trouble on some of the city streets where it's kind of really sharp corners and, you know, really city street racing. So I'd say more towards grip is more your racing line style of driving. So if you don't take the racing line, you're going to probably mess up and that is pretty damn cool. Now, 180SX build. This really, really shocked me in a very good way. So you can see that I put the tune mostly towards drift. And as I've said in the past, I'm more for the black box style handling. I preferred where it was a little bit more difficult, but I was actually surprised by the drift. It's not Criterion Drifting as we know it right now. So when you think Criterion Drifting as of now, you think Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, you think Need for Speed Rivals. But I am happy to say it actually takes a little bit more skill to get these slides going properly. In previous Need for Speeds, it was easy to get the drift going, it was easy to keep the drift, it was a matter of basically tapping the brake and it did the rest for you. Now, you actually have to counter steer in areas and you also have to kind of fight against it. If you want to extend it, you've got to turn to make it extend. If you want it shorter, you've got to make use of the brakes, you've got to make use of your NOS, you've got to make use of your handbrake. It takes a lot more thought than it did before. It's no way a simulator, but it does take more thought. So again, it balances it out because the grip handling, it does take a little bit of thought to go, you know, I need to take this at this angle. I need to make sure I slow down for this. I don't go too, in too quick. This is a matter of I need to make sure that I control it properly. I go in at the right speed. I come out at the right speed. I control it so it's not a big sweeping drift and go into a tree, for example. But as I said, it's no way a simulator, but they have got the balance right. And I'm really, really really thankful for that. Now for the final build, I decided to go smack bang in the middle of drift and grip and oh my lord, is it incredible. So this actually disabled brake to drift, meaning I really had to press the handbrake to get this thing to slide. Sometimes when I did press the handbrake, it didn't slide when I wanted it to. Again, what you've got to remember is that this could be a whole combination of things. It could be the fact that the tune just doesn't want you to do that. It could be because I haven't got enough performance mods. I needed to get a certain amount of speed from those performance mods to get the slide going properly when I press the handbrake. It could be the whole combination of things. It could be one thing, but that doesn't matter. The point is, this was the best handling setup I have used on a Need for Speed game period. Switching to this mode allowed me to kind of drift when I wanted to drift and allowed me to grip when I wanted to grip. Well, with a little bit more practice, you'd optimize with that. And obviously you got the performance upgrades and you know, you'll get the whole idea behind that. And different cars will handle differently. Now, me being one of the people that wanted Need for Speed to be a little bit more grippy and the drifting be a bit more difficult, 
they have got it spot on from what we've played so far. Again, this is an early version of the game with early things in place. So in this clip, you can see to compare the grip handling on the right and the, well, my preferred setup, right bang in the middle on the left. And again, these are different cars. Yes, I was going to use the same car and try it, but I didn't have enough time to do so. I'll probably do a proper test when the game releases. But as you can see, there is a significant difference. On the left, I can slide. And on the right, it was slidable, but you really had to force it with the handbrake, like mash the handbrake like a crazy person to get that thing to slide. Then we move on to the same setup on the left. And on the right, we've got my drift handling, which I actually had quite a lot of fun with. I think it's pretty clear to see on the right, we've got brake to drift on on this 180sx but i actually had quite a lot of fun with drifting in this normally with need for speeds because it's been very easy recently to get drifting you basically can't turn you could only drift this changes it this means that i will actually probably have a fully drift tuned car at some point in my garage maybe turn off brake to drift but you can do that it doesn't matter what you like they've really got it locked down and sorted they have really looked at what everybody wants for this new Need for Speed and got it, as far as I can tell from playing, pretty much perfect. Anyway, hopefully this video did help you and let you understand how the handling slider works a little bit more. I'm really excited to see what we can do once we get all the extra bits added into the equation as well. But be sure to leave a like on this video if you want to see more Need for Speed 2015 coverage on the channel. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with that coverage. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.